All right, so what if this same type of technology could end global warming? Is it worth it? New York Times article poses the question this week. All right, so let's talk about it with Dr. Emmanuel DiLorenzo, professor and director of a new program in ocean science and engineering at Georgia Tech. Thanks for being with us uh, this morning. Let's start off with what was in the article. According to it, scientists are investigating whether releasing a chemical compound into the air will slow Earth's warming. Is that even possible? Theoretically, it's very possible. In fact, uh, I think it's very sound science. Uh, and from a science perspective, I think it's a very interesting uh, kind of geoengineering approach. Mm -hmm. But if we consider the human factor, uh, this type of approach uh, feels to me like taking a climate pill. And let me explain what I mean by that. Imagine you're a patient and you go to your doctor for high cholesterol. Yeah. And the doctor gives you two options. The first option is change your lifestyle, maybe reduce your calorie, exercise, and try to reduce your cholesterol and, and be healthier. The other approach is take the antistatin, the anti-cholesterol drug. And you know, most people would say, yes, you know, changing your lifestyle is a good thing to do. But then at the end of the day, most people will actually take the pill. Right. And so I suspect that in this case of the climate analogy, most governments will end up rather taking the climate pill than doing the hard work yeah. of low anger. All right, so then the question becomes, does taking the pill produce worse side effects than we were originally started with? Well, here's the thing. Taking this pill could be dangerous, and, and the okay. reason for that is the following. Suppose that you have on one side a very powerful force, which is a greenhouse that is acting to really increase the temperature of the planet. And now what you want to do is we want to develop this technology, which is an anti-force of equal powerful trying to counteract you know, this effect. So now you have a very highly nonlinear system, climate Earth, okay, and you have these two powerful effects interacting. Mm -hmm. While it seems logical that you could find a balance, in reality, finding that balance is very difficult. And in a nonlinear system, you can have runaway effects and so forth. So maybe a better approach would be to say, if you have this very powerful force, let's do other type of geoengineering that try to reduce maybe the mm. maximum of this force, right, so that's... carbon capturing or things like okay, that. Okay, so has there been any testing on this theory, or is there any way even to test it? I think that uh, in the New York Times articles, uh, the, the scientists at Harvard were trying to uh, put in place an experiment uh, somewhere, I don't remember in which region, yeah. to actually try to release some of these chemical compounds and measure all these radiative balances that, that take place. But I, I was going to say, how do you test this? Because you have such a mm. large patient, if you will. I, I don't know if a, a, if a regional test of this, uh, of this kind of release of compounds would scale to a global effect. Mm -hmm. And then there's all the issues of, of time scales, like yeah. you know, some of the responses of climate Earth are delayed. Right, that's so true. So imagine like you have a knob in your shower, in an old shower, and you're turning the knob towards the hot water and it's not it's coming. Freezing so you turn all, it's freezing, we all know right. that, Doctor. And then all of a sudden that's it becomes so hot and yeah. you're like, oh my gosh, it's so hot, and you turn it down so quick and then it gets hard yeah. to actually balance that. that, that these two All right, Dr. Lorenzo, forces. we certainly appreciate you yeah. coming on. And the question is, can we outsmart Mother Nature? It's a big globe out she there. She always seems to, you know, react.